be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, heaven, Godspeed. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Наши программы предлагают много языков. Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com касайтесь до schedule. The number of reducers or flexitarians part-time vegetarians or vegans, they are a much more interesting demographic because they are much bigger. They create demand. And the thing is that uh, the more of these products there are, the easier it gets for people to shift further and further on the vegan spectrum. Continue watching to find out more. After going vegan, I felt so much better. My skin cleared up, I had a ton more energy, and I just felt clearer in the head. Jenna Dewan, vegan. If you are fortunate to travel to the historical region of Livonia, you can greet the people you meet with Derinj, which means hello in Livonian. I'm Elsbeth. The caring Livonians wish for you to achieve your noble goals in life. Welcome to part one of our show, Creating a Vegan World with Tobias Lenert, Vegan. On today's show, we will introduce Tobias Lenert, Vegan, co-founder of ProVeg International and author of the book How to Create a Vegan World, a Pragmatic Approach, in which he discusses pragmatic strategies to bring about a vegan world. Tobias travels the world to give talks on vegan advocacy, strategy and communication. It's always interesting to hear when and why people first became vegan and what motivated them to promote the compassionate vegan way of life to others. Let's hear Tobias's story and learn why he has dedicated his life to helping improve the lives of animal people. I've been vegan for 25 years and the uh, reason I became vegan was, well, it started when I was very young, when I was maybe 10 years old, when I was wondering, okay, what is the, the difference between the dog that we have near the fireplace in our home and the cow that we see in the meadow across the street in the rain. And I knew, of course, that we were going to eat that cow and that we were petting the dog. And I was wondering about the morally relevant difference between those two species. And I couldn't find an answer to that question. So the, the logical consequence would have been that I would have become a vegetarian after that. But it took me about 10 years to actually become one. Um, that was at university where I uh, read animal liberation and where I met some vegetarians. And so there I went vegetarian and then I started to write my university thesis about the human animal relationship and about the consequences of, of eating meat. And I read a lot about that. And uh, by the time I finished it, I was vegan and I, I really decided to, to spend my life on this issue because it had become clear through reading that that was kind of like the most important issue I could think of. I also cared a lot about animals, especially. After graduation, Tobias went to the USA for six months to intern with animal people rights organizations. When he returned to Belgium, 
Tobias founded an organization called Ethical Vegetarian Alternative, which is now called ProVeg Belgium and falls under the ProVeg International banner. After 15 years at ProVeg, Tobias stopped working there full-time and spent his energy as a public speaker and author, focusing on the issues of animal people rights and the transition to plant-based foods. Tobias is a strong proponent of effective altruism, a philosophical and social movement that advocates rationally altruistic acts that do as much good for the world as possible. He believes it aligns very well with the vegan and animal people rights movement. Let us hear him explain how veganism can benefit from the effective altruism approach to focus more on its results and impact. We have to do stuff that really demonstrably helps the animals, that really uh, creates uh, change for the animals. Because it is possible that we do things because, yeah, we, we are fired up and shouting or, or doing this or that really makes us feel a bit better, like we can let off steam, but that doesn't necessarily coincide with having impact for animals. So looking at evidence, at reason, at research is really important. All around the world, millions of people are realizing how vital it is to create a vegan world as urgently as possible. Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, has been sharing this message for decades. It's not difficult to make this world into a paradise. First of all, just to stop killing humans and animal people. That's it. Yes. Right. The world cannot continue to eat the way we do, to supply us the way we eat. Yes. We just don't eat, we waste, we destroy, we truly, truly, we are very unintelligently managing the resources of the planet. And we have only one planet and so many, many people already. And we keep killing it and destroying it in different ways. It's not correct. It's not right. Yeah. The state of our earth, of our world is really degraded. But the best is to repair this planet. We have everything already here. If we just stop destroying it, we have a beautiful place we can call home all the time. Vegan, because the animal people too are intelligent. Intelligent viewers, we will pause for a moment to make a nourishing drink from locally grown fruits. We'll be right back after this message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our show, Creating a Vegan World with Tobias Lienert, Vegan, part one of two. What is the quickest or most effective way to achieve the vegan world we all dream of so much and that we know is so critical to the future of our precious planet? Many people use different strategies to achieve this noble goal, but are some methods more effective than others? In his book, How to Create a Vegan World, a Pragmatic Approach and in many of his lectures, Tobias focuses on what he describes as flexitarians or reducitarians. These are people who are not yet willing to become completely vegan, but who try to reduce the consumption of products from animal people, perhaps for the animal people themselves, for their health or for environmental or other ethical reasons. Tobias explains that contrary to many people's assumptions, this group is essential because it is so large and by them eating more plant-based foods and fewer animal people products, they make compassionate vegan alternatives more affordable and the exploitation of animal people less profitable, thus further accelerating the transition towards a vegan world. The number of reducers or flexitarians part-time vegetarians or vegans, 
Uh, that's a number that can run into 20, 30 percent, 40 percent of the population. So there are a much more interesting demographic because they are much bigger. And so if you, for instance, look at, um, at dairy, uh, if you look at all the dairy in the world, at the liquid dairy in the world, the milk, 13 percent of all the liquid dairy is already plant based. 13 percent of all the milk. So it's clear to see that it's not just the vegans who are responsible for that 13%. We're way too small a group for that. Uh, it is uh, people who, for whatever reason, to whatever degree, consume plant-based milk. It could be for health reasons, could be for allergies or whatever, and they could do it like one, one day a week or, or part time, half time or whatever. But no matter what their reasons, no matter how much they consume of it, um, they create demand they create a market and and the producers will play into that demand and that's why they're producing vegan products and the thing is that uh, the more of these products there are thanks to these reducers the easier it gets for people to shift further and further on the vegan spectrum so that is what I think will um, help create a tipping point. It's not that, of course, that vegans are not important. I mean, these two groups, vegans and reducers, are important, but we really shouldn't ignore the really crucial importance that the uh, the reducers, the non-vegans, have. Uh, and, and we should see that they are strategically very important. Should we, we should, as vegans, not definitely not look look down on them. Tobias's pragmatic approach to creating a vegan world guided by the philosophy behind effective altruism can create a dilemma for many committed vegan activists and spiritual practitioners. What should we ask of our non-vegan friends and family members and why? Should we only promote the compassionate vegan diet and lifestyle and focus on its fundamental importance for all humans? Or should we use pragmatic strategies to bring about a vegan world as soon as possible, even if the paths of individuals we share the message with might be slower? Let us hear what approach Tobias takes and why. Pragmatism says that you don't necessarily ask for what you want, because what you want may just be not realistic. So in the early 1800s um, in, in the UK, it was not yet realistic to ask for the abolition of slavery. That was considered by the abolitionists an unwinnable uh, demand. So what they did was they they asked for other things. And one of the things that they asked for, that they, they campaigned for, was something that was called the Foreign Slave Trade Act, which was about the idea that it would be illegal for British subjects, for British citizens, to invest in slavery by other countries. So to invest, for instance, in slave ships that were French or American. And of course, you had many abolitionists right then saying or thinking things like, okay, but we are here asking for a partial ban on something that is really absolutely evil. How can we ask for that? And are we this way not implicitly not condemning and therefore partly approving this this horrible thing uh, and of course you can see that that this is very much very similar to what many vegans think they they believe that like we cannot ask for a reduction because if we say okay uh, it's 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 a good start or it's a great idea to uh, be a part-time vegan or to do meatless mondays or whatever then we are uh, implicitly they think um, approving of uh, eating meat or eating animal products on the other days. And um, I can see that point. Um, and it is sometimes difficult to not ask what you ideally want. But pragmatism says, like, we should do what works. We should go for what works. Tobias's book, How to Create a Vegan World, a Pragmatic Approach, is available on Amazon.com. To learn more about Tobias Lehnert Vegan and his book, please visit veganstrategist.org. Vegan, such kind gentlemen and ladies you are. 
Dedicated viewers, thank you for your company today. Coming up next is Countries with least karma lead a compassionate life to attract more benevolence, part one of four. On Between Master and Disciples, we pray that society will rapidly progress towards a vegan world where all beings are treated with love and compassion. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash VE.